Get your Bible. Get a notebook. I want to teach you what to do when you're in difficult times. My title today is nothing to do with that. Sometimes life, sometimes life can present itself to you in several ways. Things can happen in your life that contradict what you've been praying for. It may look like and sometimes that God puts you in a situation that's not favorable to you. It's very important that we understand that we must praise God and worship him instead of complaining about what we're in. What you're in is simply an opportunity to praise God in the middle of it. What's happening to your life and what's going on around you is simply an opportunity for you to show what's inside of you. It's very, very, very important. Many things happen that are not under your control, but God gives you a time and a period in your life where you can take control of it. That what's outside of you has nothing to do with inside of you. So get your notebook, get your notebook, get your heart, get your spirit ready, because today I want to show you how to go through a mess and come out squeaky clean. I want to show you how to deal with things in your life and make sure you get what God wants for you in it. Am I making sense? So now I got a few people here that are, that are musicians and singers, and which I'm going to teach them while I teach you. I'm going to teach them while I teach you. Very, very, very important. Are you ready? In the Bible, in Acts 16, there's a story that Peter is writing. Peter is writing it from his perspective, but the story focuses on Paul and Silas. It focuses on Paul and Silas from Peter's standpoint, from his perspective. It says that they were on their way to pray. You can, you can look at it if you want. I'm not going to read this because I want to get to my points. Uh, Acts 16, 16 through 34 is the whole story. They're on their way to prayer. In other, ways, in other words, many of us can be in a place in our life where we're on our way to do what God's called us to do. We're on our way. We're simply obeying him. That's all we're doing. We're not, we're not trying to be big. We're not trying to be great. I just want to get my life in a position where I can obey, obey God every day. How about you? And I'm on my way to do something for God. I'm on my way to pray. I'm on my way to lift God up. I'm on my way to, to minister to someone. I'm on my way to sing. I'm on, my way, I'm on my way to do business. I'm on my way to be a nurse or a doctor. Whatever I do, I'm on my way to it. On this particular day, there was a girl. She was a slave girl. She was under bondage. And she also had a spirit of divination, which meant she, by the devil, could find out what was going on inside you. She could sense and feel who you were by the devil. She had a spirit of divination. And she was following them to prayer every morning. She'd been doing this for weeks. But when she followed them, she had something to say. And what she would say was, these are men of God. They're the real men of God. And they are coming to tell us the truth and how to be saved. She was saying the truth. She was talking about the right thing. There are some times in your life you're obeying God, and the people who are talking to you are saying the right thing. They're receiving from you. You believe you're going to, job, to your job and you're being a blessing. And some people are speaking life to you, but it's coming from a spirit of death. It's coming from a spirit that doesn't love God. It comes from a spirit of... And Paul now, Paul was so discerning, that on a particular day, it says he had had enough. Paul had had enough with what? Not with what she, what she was saying, but the spirit in which she was saying it from. He was tired of people around him being bound. And he knew they were making money from this girl. So Paul looked at the girl one day on his way to prayer, and he said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. The Bible says in that very hour, that spirit came out of her. What happens now is very important because in these days, saints, and I'm talking to AWC, I'm talking to you, you got to decide, is it capitalism above lives? Is it, is, it, is it industry above lives? Which one wins? It's either your bottom line or it's people. Which one wins? I say in the kingdom of God, I'm like Paul. People win. 
I don't care if I never go back to work. I don't care if anything ever happens for me again. We've got to do what we can to save people because it's the poor people that are enslaved. It's the people who don't have an education that are enslaved. They don't have life insurance. They don't have anybody to stand for them. And we, the saints of God, we've got to stand. I'm going to be like Paul. I'm going to stay right here and make sure we do everything we can to save people's lives. Are y'all here? Don't want to get stuck there. So now Paul cast the demon out. When the demon came out of her, this is what happens. The men who were making the money from her slavery said, arrest Paul and Silas. They drug them in in front of the magistrates. And they said these words. We don't believe in these customs. We don't believe. We're Romans. We believe in the bottom line. We believe in making money. And these guys have come in here and they're casting the demons out of people that we have subjected. That will not work. So they said, they tore their clothes off, they ripped off their robes, and they said, go beat them half to death and throw them in prison. So they put Paul and Silas, I don't know why they didn't take Peter, maybe so he could write this. They took Paul and Silas and put them in, not the prison, they put them in the dungeon of the prison. They put them in the worst place in the prison and they put stocks on their hands and their feet to the wall. So Paul and Silas are in the dungeon, the darkest part. There's no light there. There are, no, there, there are rats there. It's dank. It's dark. It's lonely. Nothing is happening. Just them in the inner part of the jail. Just them in the worst place in life. Have you ever felt like you were in the worst place in your life, but you couldn't really tell nobody? You have a choice now to either complain or praise. You have a choice now on what you do when you're in an impossible situation. Can I see your hands online? Can I see your hands online? If you've ever been in an impossible situation that did not look like you would ever get out of it. Many of us are there right now. We're in a place and we're like, we don't know what to do. Now here's what I want to tell you first of all. If you're in a place like that, this is what you got to understand. Serving God may not seem fair, but it's always just. Write it down. Write it down. You're on your way to do good, and now you're in trouble. All you did was do what the Bible said. You cast a demon out of someone, and now somebody has a problem with that. Now you're in jail. You did what you were supposed to do at work. You did what you were supposed to do at school, but it did not match the customs of this system. There are a lot of customs of this system that we need to ignore because this system is not kingdom, and we have to act like Treat the world like we're kingdom citizens. Am I making sense at all? So now watch this. You've got to understand that when you serve God, you're going to end up in spots you did not plan for. Serving God is going to cost you. I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to lie to you. I want to tell you that when you obey God, you're going to get in a predicament. You're going to end up in a predicament because what you're doing is adverse to culture. They, don't, they didn't get mad at Nehemiah until Nehemiah decided to help his people. That's when they get mad at you. That's when they get upset with you. When you finally decide to obey God no matter what, that's when the they, proverbial, comes after your life. Because you've decided to step into it. But here's what I'm saying. you got to make up in your mind how you're going to react when you get into this place of trouble. You got to make up your mind before you get there. Before you encounter it, you've got to decide when, when, not if, when something happens in my life, what am I going to do? And then you practice it. You practice your praise. Write it down. You practice your praise even when it don't look right. You practice your praise in good times. You practice your praise when everything's going well. Am I making sense? So you got to understand, it may be a horrible predicament. You, you may be in a place where you don't even know how you're going to come out. So now, let's start at the 25th verse and read a little bit. Here it is. They're in an impossible predicament. 
They're in the bottom and they got a jailer that's watching over them in real time. Watch what he says here. It's amazing. But at midnight, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. I just got a couple points in there I want you to understand. The point I want you to understand right here is what you do in the darkest period of your life matters. What you do when you're broken, when you don't have a way out, when you don't know what to do, when you're depressed, when you're suicidal, when you're in a position that you can't pay your bills, you are sick and they have given up on you, what you do in that moment is important. Why? Because Paul and Silas, what people don't know, what people don't know is that when Paul and Silas got to this place, it says they were praying and singing hymns. But if you study it, Paul and Silas were praying for the other prisoners. They were not praying for themselves. They already knew they were going to do well. They knew they were going to come out. So they prayed out loud for all the prisoners. And they sang praise songs to God. It would go something like this. My God is great and greatly to be praised. And he sent us to jail to heal and save everyone here. That's crazy. God sent me to jail. This is what the praise is. God is great and greatly to be praised. And he sent us here to save all of y'all. God put me in this prison because otherwise I wouldn't have this pulpit. God put me here in this company that doesn't like me so that I could make sure you all know what a kingdom citizen looks like. They were not praying for themselves. Can I say this? It's not always about you. It's not always that God is putting you in a situation to let the devil kill you. Sometimes God allows you to be in a situation so he can show the devil who he is through you. Sometimes God allows something so that he can show the world how big he is. And we thank God he picks nobodies like me. He picks nobodies that could never do anything. A person without a voice, a person without a pedigree, a person without any money. But all he has is God. God uses that. So what did I say? It matters what you do in your darkest time. It matters how you go through. It's really not about what you go through. It's about how you go through it. And we have to decide to go through everything in praise. Talk to me. We have to go through everything with praise. We have to go through everything in praise with thanksgiving. In all things give thanks. Not because of all things. He said, in, in it, give thanks. In it, don't complain. In it, don't murmur. In it, praise God. When you're in it, praise, I'm going to stay here for a minute. When you're in it, praise God. Not when you come out. You praise him in it. You worship him in it. You glorify him in it. And while you're glorifying him, pray for everybody that don't have a God like yours. Pray for everybody around because whatever you're going through, somebody's looking. The prisoners are listening. Shout it with me online. The prisoners are listening. Everybody else in jail is listening to you. There are a lot of people at your job that don't like their job. So they're trying to figure out why do you like your job? Why are you able to go through it? Why do you keep getting promoted? Ain't none of us got a raise, and you got a raise. What is it? It's because in my darkest place, I praise God. I lift him up with everything happening to me. My sickness has nothing to do with my praise. My prison cell has nothing to do with my praise. This prison cell can't put my spirit in bondage. I am a free man. Come on now. It's not saying. It's not what I go through, but it's how. How do I go through it? How am I going to go through this? How am I going to go through this? When I'm in it, I can get confused. I have to have a game plan for when things go bad. Because I know if I'm serving God, Joshua, if you're serving him, the day is going to come when your back is going to be against the wall. And it's going to look like there's no help. So you got to decide now, what do I do when I get there? So what I'm going to do when I get there is I'm going to lift my hands and say, God is God. There is no other God. And if he allowed me to be here, there's got to be something good that's coming out of it. Am I making sense to y'all at all? So now watch this. The prisoners are listening. There are people in prison with you. 
who don't know your God. And when you start singing about the goodness of God, y'all, um, Mississippi just came up in my head. When you start praising God mm, in your prison, what is people going to do around you? When your legs and your hands are shackled and you sing and praise God, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He who abides under the shadow of the, who, he, I, I'm, I'm hidden in God. He fights for me. God ain't fighting for you. You're in shackles. Now, the prisoners know how to respond to what's going on in their life. When they see how you respond, if when something happens to you, you complain, that's the lesson you're teaching others about when they go through. Because they don't know your God. They've never met him. Now you're in prison. You're in a place where you shouldn't be. And you've been beaten. You're not just there in stocks. You got whip marks to prove that culture doesn't like you. Can I talk to you? You got beat marks. You got stripes to prove that you're counterculture. You have wounds that prove that the magistrates don't like what you're doing. My God, my God, my God. It's not in flow with culture or society. And you got the wounds to prove it. They were just beaten, now they're bleeding. Without, without, without ointment, without medical care. They're in chains. They're in chains, bleeding from their whips. But they're singing the praises of God and praying for those who don't know him. So it matters how you go through dark times. And just say with me, the prisoners are listening. You got to show them how to respond. Now watch this. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Hmm? The foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. Lord have mercy. And everyone's chains, everyone's chains were loosed. Can I say something to you? God is attracted to praise and worship. Yes, sir. God is attracted to your worship, not your complaining. Your complaining sends God away from you. It is your worship. Can I, can I talk to the worshipers behind me? And I know I'm preaching to the choir. 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 But I, I mean, I know it. I know it. I get it. Y'all like, were well, you preaching to praises? I want to turn you into them who learn how to go through everything with praise on their lips. You need to learn how to dance on thumbtacks. You need to learn how to run on thorns. You need to learn how to walk through the briars, lifting your hands and not even worried about protecting yourself because that's where the power is. The power is in your praise. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Can I, can I tell you something? Can I, can, I, can I tell you something? What God does when you start to praise him, he now hears because he's looking for a place to put his throne. And because you're a kingdom citizen, God can't put a throne in your life unless you invite him. He's not going to force his way into your life and situation. Paul knew if I praise him, I will attract him. Once I attract him, the first thing that's going to come is his throne, which is his presence. People think he is the presence. It's not. Anywhere the king's throne is, the king is there. But there's got to be a throne there before he comes. So listen to me. When you start praising God, well, you want Bible, don't you? You want Bible. Here's the Bible. God inhabits. The praises of his people. Praise comes before worship. God inhabits. What does that mean? He sits in. He puts his throne. He lives in praise. Praise now, when they started praising God, God put a throne in the prison. And as soon as that throne gets there, Jesus comes and sits on it. Let me help you. 
When you go to the court now, when that judge walks in, everybody stands up. If you don't stand up, there's something wrong with you, they escort you out. When that judge sits down, everybody sits down and shuts up. Because when that judge sits down, it's time to rule. When Jesus comes in the midst of us, he sits on the throne. And when he sits, he's not there to lift his hands. That's what you do. When he gets there, he's there to put a gavel down. And when the gavel comes down, everything shakes. Oh, see, you don't hear what I'm saying. The foundation of every prison in your life is waiting for a judgment from the king. And the way you get him in your life to render judgment is when you praise. So you got to praise in trouble. You got to praise when you're sick. You got to praise when they say it's over. You got to praise when you get fired. You got to praise when your husband walks away. You got to pra- you got to praise when the car breaks. You got to praise when the wash and dryer ain't working no more. You got to praise when that woman you love no longer loves you. You got to praise in those moments because when you do God comes and builds a throne and he sits on it. Listen to what happened to them. When they praised, Jesus came and everything was shaken. Everything was shaken. And do y'all, let, let me help you understand now. The Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says, the, the Bible says, it's not me. It says all the doors were open. And all the chains we're loosed. Hold up now. Now I don't understand this now. It's Paul and Silas that's praying. Ain't no prisoners praying. They just listening, Mike. Yes, sir. They don't know how to ask God for nothing. But Paul and Silas is praying. <laughs> and now the prisoners, their door is open. Everybody's chains fall off. Everybody. The murderers, the ones that were in there like Paul and Silas, falsely accused, the ones that have been there a long time, it didn't matter who they were. Every door opened. Every chain was broken because two guys knew what to do in a bad situation. (laughs) Two guys said, this prison has nothing to do with my praise. It has nothing to do with my worship. It has nothing to do with what I'm doing up here. Y'all with me? Now watch this now. Watch this. Because you got to worship today. You need to go ahead right now. If you have to, go put some church clothes on. If you have to, go get your Bible. Get it a bonnet. I mean, put a cross around your neck. I don't know what you got to do, but in the next few minutes, we just need to find a place of worship and praise. We just need to give God adoration. We just need to lift him up. Now watch this now. Watch this now. He gets attracted, and now we learn That it's not all about you. When you're in a situation, you have to understand that there are those around you who don't know God. And they're looking for you to show them. Watch this keeper now in verse 27. Listen to what he says. The keeper of the prison awakened from his sleep. And seeing he saw the prison doors open. He supposed, listen, he supposed that when the doors opened and the chains were broken, that everybody would run. Because it seems like if I can do this and I can come across right, it seems like everybody's trying to get out of prison. Everybody's trying to run from a job they don't like. Everybody's trying to leave a marriage that's giving them hell. Everybody is trying to run from the sickness and disease that's ravaging their bodies. Everybody's trying to get out of a predicament and a situation. But I want to tell you, the prison you're in is not made of iron. It's not made of the stuff you think you're going through. That prison is spiritual. And once you get free in your praise, you can praise him in prison. You can praise him in the hospital. You can praise him next to someone who's dying. You can praise him with the pink slip. You can praise him when the the business is going in the tank. Somebody said to me the other day, Pastor, is your church going to survive? Is your church going to survive? Lord Jesus, y'all got to help me with this. Is your church going to survive this pandemic? Because I think my church is not going to make it. We're in financial trouble and people are not giving. They were not ready for this pandemic. They don't have a screen. They don't have an app. They don't have a way to give online. They weren't, they weren't ready. And they say, how are y'all doing? I said, we're doing good. He said, well, what about your technology? I said, bump the technology. It ain't about no technology. It's about AWC is a praising church. 
AWC is a lifting up God church. And if God takes the building and takes the church, it all belongs to him. But in the middle of it, I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to praise God and say, God giveth and God taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. He is a blessing God. And if he allows something to be taken out of my life, it means he's got something else. Can you clap right there? You don't need no music. Just clap right there. So watch this. He says, he says the jailer, the jailer is getting ready to kill himself because he thinks everybody's trying to get out. Paul says, don't slit your throat. Don't kill yourself. Everybody in the prison got saved. While we were singing, while we were singing, everybody got saved. Woo! While we were praising God and praying for them, everybody got delivered. All the murderers got forgiven. All the thieves got forgiven. All who were in here falsely stopped accusing people of mistreating them. They said, forget my oppressor. It's not about my oppressor. It's not about these Romans. It's all about what's inside of me. It's all about what's happening inside me. It's not about anything outside of me. Say it with me. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It's got nothing to do with what's outside of me. And they said, don't kill yourself. And the, pris the guard walked in, y'all, and saw everybody still in their cells with the doors open and no shackles on their hands and feet. And they're just sitting there in their cells with smiles on their face. And the jailer said, I don't know what the flip this is, but I want some of that, whatever it is. Whatever y'all was doing in there, Paul and Silas, I want it too. And now the jailer gets saved. And I want to tell y'all what I suppose. Because the Bible said they, and I'm like, who is they? It says that the jailer brought them to his house. And he fed all of them. And I'm like, who is all of them? This jailer took everybody out of the prison who got saved. Brought them to his house. He texted his wife, said, honey, I'm bringing 50 people with me. We finna start a church up in here. I know that I'm Roman. I know I'm from the Philippians. I know that I am not a Jew. But these boys just got us all saved. They fed them at the house. They taught them at the house. And a whole new revival broke out because Paul and Silas were in jail. The jailer, his wife and kids, all the prisoners got saved. It was a miracle, some say. I say it was not a miracle. It was because somebody, need, somebody knew what to do in the middle of crisis. Are y'all here? It was a whole nother thing. So they all believed in God. They, they all believed in God. Everybody believed in God. Everybody that was there believed in God. And it set all of them free. You hear what I'm saying? Now, here's my question to you. What if Paul and Silas had done something different? Hmm? What if they'd done something different? <laughs> when they got in a predicament. What if Paul and Silas were depressed? And when they got depressed, they just killed themselves instead of praying. What if Paul and Silas lost their job? And what they, the choice of response was to gripe and grumble. Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Pray for me today, saints. I'm going through. What are we supposed to pray for you? Huh? Come on, come on now, come on now. Don't be ignorant. You can't be ignorant all your life. Let me teach you. What are we supposed to pray for you? Lord Jesus, help Martin. He going through. Wrong prayer. If you call me to pray for you, I'm going to pray this. Lord, I pray for Martin. Give him a heart to stand on his feet and lift his head and lift his hands before a God that never fails. I pray for Martin right now that he'll just praise you. He'll just lift you up. He'll just say, my God is God. And if he... 
If he's going to deliver me, I'm going to be delivered. But if he doesn't deliver me, it doesn't mean he couldn't. Yes, this is my God. He does what he wants. I'm here, and I'm going to praise him. Until they cut my head off, I'm going to praise him. Until they cut my hands off, I'm going to praise him. Until I die, I'm going to praise him because this is my choice. And I know when I praise him, everybody's going to be lifted up. I think Pastor Josh said it last week. That praise and worship comes from the inside. Yes, sir. It doesn't come from the outside. It's a sacrifice we give to him because of the atoning grace of Jesus. We give it to him because he's worthy of it. Am I making sense? So worship and praise is what we do. <clears throat> it's how we live. It's how we represent ourselves in this world. They should know. You're a saint when they see you praising God. They should know you're blessed in the middle of it by how you lift your hands, by how you bless God. That's how the world knows. So watch this. Never let what's outside come inside. Come on. Protect yourself in crisis with your praise. Protect yourself in crisis with your praise. Your life has nothing to do with your worship. Your conditions have nothing to do with your praise. Nothing at all. Are y'all here? Worship comes from the inside. It does not affect you. Anything around you, it does not affect you. Say this with me. My situation has nothing to do with my praise. My sickness has nothing to do with my praise. My financial situation has nothing to do with my praise. My education status has nothing to do with my praise. My marriage and the struggles have nothing to do with my praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Because when I praise God, he shows up. Watch this now. Watch this now. You're going to love this last verse. Habakkuk 3 and 17. Oh my God. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Let's get ready to exalt the Lord. Let's get ready to lift him up. Come on. Let's get ready. Let's get ready to bless him. Let's get ready. Let's get ready to praise him. Don't fall on your knees yet. We're going to give you a minute to do that. Right now, we want to praise him. We want to lift up a high sounding praise. We want the cymbals to roar. We want the drums and the organ to roar. We want the piano to roar. Open your Bibles, last verse. Habakkuk. Habakkuk 3 and 17. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Y'all should have done it right there. Somebody shout, hallelujah. There we go. Come on. Let's go to church. Listen to this. 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 Though the fig tree, the fig tree may not blossom, nor there be fruit on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail. There ain't no figs, there ain't no olives. And the yields yield no food. We don't have food, we don't have olives, we don't have figs. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, my sheep, my lambs, my goats, my, my camels, is cut off from the fold, and there is no hurt in the stalls. There's not even nothing in the stalls. I have nothing. Habakkuk says these words. Yet, I will rejoice, not because of the Lord, but in the Lord. I will rejoice. I will praise in the situation. Why? Because I will joy in the God of my salvation, because this God is my strength. This God is my keeper. And those who praise him will always be kept. Right there, lift your hands. Right there, lift your hands. Those who praise God will be kept. 
Give me just a little bit more mic in this monitor. Those who praise him will be kept. Those who praise him will be kept. Come on. Those who praise him will be kept. Praise him. Clap your hands and praise him. Lift your hands and praise him. Right there in the middle of your house, praise him. Run around the house and praise him. Get up out of your seat and praise him. Lift your voice and praise him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, praise him. Praise him, come on, stay there, stay there, praise him. Praise him, praise him, turn her up. Come on, praise him, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. That's it, come on, come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Hey. siblings knew him. My brother is about 74, 75. So I called him and I said, tell me your perspective of our daddy. He said, Martin, our family was poor and my dad wasn't serving God at all. He wasn't serving God. My, my sister, my oldest sister, Ann, got saved in the Kojic church. Then my mom got saved. Then a few other my sisters got saved. And they, they, they drew my daddy into salvation. He was doing a bunch of stuff that I won't talk about. My brother said, Martin, in 24 hours, our daddy changed. He was a complainer. He was drinking. He had a bunch of stuff going on. In 24 hours, he changed from complaining to praise. My brother said they'd be out in the woods cutting wood and all of a sudden my daddy, y'all, my daddy would drop his axe, fall on his knees and just te start telling God, God, you're so wonderful. You saved me. You saved me. You delivered me from alcohol. You delivered me from, from, from complaining, from worrying. You delivered me. And he said he'd just stand there watching my daddy, praise God, for over an hour. And once the presence of God would leave my dad, he'd get back up, take his axe, and keep cutting down trees. He said he'd be riding with my dad, and all of a sudden my dad would pull over on the road. Pull over on the road, put the car in park, and just lift his hands in the car, and just start praising God. He said, I'd never seen anything like it. My father 
taught us how to praise in poverty. On the wrong side of the tracks in Mississippi. We were poor and didn't know we were poor. But my daddy, my mama, my sister made us rich because they taught us how to praise God. Praise will bring you further than your complaining. Praise will lead to your worship. Praise is what you do when you're anticipating God. And worship is what you do after God moves on your behalf. So now, I want you to do something for me. Get in a posture of praise. Come here. Move your head space to a space, from a space of complaining and into a place of high exhortation. I mean high. God, you're good. I mean exuberant. Put some energy in it. Let God know that you believe what you're saying. And let's see what God does. Are y'all ready? On the count of three, I want you to go to high praise. I want you to do everything you can do to let God know on the instruments that we're praising him. I want you to do it in a way that it goes through the internet for everybody who needs a way out of prison. Are y'all ready? One, two, three. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Everybody, come on, hi, come on, come on, come on. Hello everyone, Dr. Martin Williams of Ambassadors Worship Center. I want to thank you for tuning in today to this amazing message. It's our hope that it wasn't just amazing and that you just learned something, but you learned enough and have enough inspiration to go into the world and be that kingdom citizen, especially that ambassador that you're called to be. Because this blessed you so much, I want to ask you to do something very important. Sow into this ministry. Give. We use every penny, every dime to bless more people. You also need to connect to us. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page. That bell right there, you know that bell that you see? It allows you to get everything that we put out. You'd be the first one to know. I'm so excited that we're going to see you next week. So until then, God bless you.